Hi class, so here is a new extra DQ I'm trying out. Uh, this is supposed to get you even a little bit more experience with what um, empirical probability versus theoretical probability is. Um, it's a slightly more interesting example than the one we have in topic five DQ one. <clears throat> uh, as usual, uh, I have a worksheet here where we're gonna put our name in and the data is gonna generate based on your name. So I'll put in Let's see, if I don't like the data generated with my name, I'll use another. So I would like a I would like a slightly bigger number than that. So let me try something else. <clears throat> there, that's good. Um, okay, so in, in this sheet, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have uh, a six-sided die. So the name Susan uh, generates a six-sided die here, right? And so we're gonna roll that six-sided die twice uh, and generate the sum. So this is like when you're throwing two dice and adding the two together, okay? Um, okay, and so that's sort of the setup. This this tells you what to do. It says come up here to this cell, and you see it says ran between uh, one and a four. That's this number here. So this generates a random number between one and six. This generates a random number between one and six, and we're going to do that a bunch of times. Okay, there's actually ten thousand times here. Okay, but uh, I don't. I can just put my mouse over there and double click, and that fills all of those down. <clears throat> okay, so a lot of this fills itself out for you. So that that's an you know, this is rolled the dice for me 10,000 times, okay? Um, okay, and then what I wanna do here is I wanna put in the formulas for empirical and theoretical probability. Okay, so this is a little bit harder because here we're rolling two dice and adding, right? So on this one, I've made a, a table of uh, possible outcomes. So we come over here and we look, and this, this also fills itself out for us. And you see, we've got the first die and it rolls one to six, second die one to six, right? So the, the total number of outcomes here is, it, it, this is a six by six table, so there's 36 possible outcomes here, right? Uh, or six squared, okay? Uh, and you see if I roll two ones, I get a two. If I roll a one and a two, I get a three. If I roll a one and a three, I get a four, <clears throat> okay? And then you see that there's one way to get a two, two ways to get a three, three ways to get a four, four ways to get a five, right? Five ways to get a six, etc. Okay, and over here I actually did that for us. So here's the table, right? Here's our possible outcomes between 2 and 12, okay? Um, and then the frequencies, and you see for the frequencies, I just use the count if function. So I just say, look at this date over here and count the numbers of threes that I see. Look at this date over here and count the number of fours that I see, etc. okay? So here's our frequencies. We've got, and these will all add up to 36, right? There's a total of 36 rolls here, right? So there's, you know, one, two, two threes, three fours, et cetera. I add all those things up all the way to this 12, and I should get 36 total total uh, outcomes here, right? Okay, so the probability, um, actually, I'll put a, a question here in the, in the video for those people who view it the right way. Um, what would the probability be for, say, rolling a four? Okay. So to see that, right, I, you know, what are the number of ways, sorry, rolling a four, right? The outcome here is a four. So I'm actually asking about that one, okay? Um, well, how many ways could I roll a four? I can roll it three ways, right? But, so that's the, that's sort of the event, rolling a four, right? The number of outcomes in that event are three. The total number of outcomes are 36, right? So three over 36 would be the, would be the um, probability of rolling a four, okay? Um, so we can put this in our table here. So our probability is going to be equal. Whoops, this, I'm doing the theoretical probability first. Let me come over here. So this will be equal to, um, I come over here and I say um, the number of outcomes. So there's one way to get a two. And I'm going to divide by, well, the, the number of outcomes for each die squared, right? Because that gives you my table of 36 things. So this thing squared, okay? And so that gives me the theoretical probability there. And you see it turns green if it's right, okay? And I can copy this formula here um, and paste it down. I don't want to paste it all the way down, just to just to where it makes sense, right? And paste it down to here. You're copying formulas, okay? Oops, what did I do wrong? I need to make this a static reference. Right. Otherwise, I'm dividing things like by, I'm, you know, in the next in the next cell down, I'd be dividing by this text here or something, right? That doesn't make any sense, okay? So let's try that. Let me copy this formula. Let me paste that formula. Mm. There we go. Okay, and you see they all turn green. And unlike the one you do in your extra in your actual DQ, you notice these these actually change, right? There are, if you come over here and look, there's more ways of getting a six, sorry, of getting a seven 
than there is of anything else, right? So the probability of rolling a 7 is 6 over 36, or 1 6, and that's higher than any other probabilities that are here, right? Um, you know, the frequencies of 7 here are 6, right? The frequency of 8s or 5s. So there's a 6 out of 36 chance of rolling a 7, there's a 5 out of 36 chance of rolling an 8, right? Um, so, so that's a little bit more complicated than the one you have in the DQ, where you're just rolling a single die, and the it, and the uh, theoretical probabilities of each roll is just one over the number of faces, right? So that's called a uniform distribution. They all have the same probability, right? There's a one in six chance that I roll a two on this die, right? But when I roll two dice and add them up, then I get a more interesting uh, distribution, right? So the probability of getting a seven is higher than the probability of getting a two, okay? And, and most people have played with dice and sort of understand that, um, you know, intuitively at this point. <clears throat> okay, and it's true with dice that are not six-sided dice. So, so if your name is something else, this won't be a six-sided. It'll be you know, different-sided, right? Um, okay, for the empirical probability, then what is that? Well, that is um, the frequency, right, of that particular outcome, which is two over the number of rolls. Now, where are the number of rolls here? It's here. Okay, so here we have a thousand rolls that I'm actually counting. Now, there's actually ten thousand rolls in this um, table here, but here in the frequency, I'm actually only counting up to this thousand, okay? And in just a minute, we're gonna ch change this to 2,000, 3,000, et cetera, okay? And, um, you know, in order, I don't want that thing to change either as I do my little um, cut and paste thing. So copy this, I'll paste this down as formulas. I'm pasting it as formulas so I don't mess up the formatting of the, the little squares here, okay? Um, okay, so these are that, and you notice that these numbers are pretty close, and you would expect them to be pretty close. We're rolling a thousand iterations of rolling two dice, we would expect the empirical probability to be pretty close to the theoretical probability. Okay, and here's the absolute differences. Okay, and then the, the thing we want here is now the average of those differences. So a lot of this is like your, your DQ. Um, so I'm going to take the average of just those things there. Okay. And there we get that. So everything's green, that means good. Everything's the way it's supposed to be. Okay, so that's the first part of this. And and we've done this for a thousand rolls. Okay, now we're gonna come down here is actually look at what happens as I go up. So I'm so I have a thousand rolls. I have a 0 0.0065 error here. Now that that's random. So of course when I when I type this number in and I hit uh, enter, everything's going to change, and now my new error becomes 0 0.0099, right? And if I were to do something else, it would change again. Okay, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change, and notice that it put a point on my graph here, and it starts to produce a model for me to, to, to fit this data, okay? And and uh, and I'm assuming this model has the form here, so I'm assuming it has the form C times X to the B, where X is the number of rolls, right? So X here would be 1,000, okay? And then I want you to do the same thing with 2,000, so here we're going to put in 2,000. And this is where it's great that all these numbers change automatically because now I just need to type to, type out this error, right? Which is uh, 0 0.0070, 0 0.007. Ooh, 007. Okay. Um, no, now notice when I hit enter, of course, this is also for 2000. It drops down to 0 0.0049. Okay, but we're going to ignore that. A better a better thing to do here would be to repeat this whole table several times and take the average of these, but, but we're just going to do this like this. Okay, for 3,000, I get 0, 0, 0.47, 0, 0, 0, 0.0047, whoops, <clears throat> okay. So this takes a little while, and notice that, that it's, so, it's sort of giving us a trend line that's trying to predict this data, and this model we're getting keeps changing a little bit, okay. So I'm going to change this to 4,000, okay, and I get 0, 0.0031, okay, and we just keep doing this, 5,000. There's no way to automate this. This you have to do by hand. Uh, 0 0.0024, okay, um, 6,000, and you're supposed to be sort of watching what's going on over here, because we want to we want to say something over here when we're done, all right, so I get 0 0.0034, okay, so things aren't going strictly up or down, but it looks like our trend is sort of mainly down, so 7,000, um, 0 0.0023, Okay, um, 8,000, uh, 0 0.0016. Okay, let's go 9,000. Okay, 0 0.0025. Okay, one more, 10,000. 
Oh, one, two, three. Whoops. Oh, one, two, three. Okay, so there's actually 10,000 rolls of dice there in column C. So this is as far as I could go. I couldn't go any further. Zero, zero, point zero, two, five again. Okay. Okay, so that's what we get as our model. Okay, and if you if you try this uh, many many times, uh, and you even put different names in here, so you got different number of dice, you would actually see that this exponent comes out pretty close to minus 0.5, right? Which would be something like. So this is like so minus 0.5 is the same as you know raised to the power minus a half, right? So that's the same as basically this coefficient here times uh, the number of rolls. Sorry, this coefficient right here divided by the square root of the number of rolls, right? So this these um, predictions are decreasing something like the square root of the number of rolls, uh, which actually theoretically is what is what should be done. I mean, that's that's for a more advanced class, but that's that's kind of giving you the right idea of what's going on here. Um, okay, so so you know what do you what do you notice? So the question, you know, you're supposed to sort of watch this and see what happens. You look at your model. Clearly, the trend line is decreasing, right? And so your response is say something to the effect of, you know, as we make more and more rolls, the average error that we're getting, right? So the difference between the uh, empirical probabilities and the theoretical probabilities are decreasing. And in fact, if you really want to get uh, smart about it, you could say they're decreasing basically as, you know, the square root of the number of rolls. So it's like one over the square root of the number of rolls is what we're dividing by. To, to see how they're decreasing, um, you know. So as we get more and more rolls, we're dividing by a bigger and bigger number, right? So the square root of a bigger number is bigger than the square root of a smaller number, and we're dividing by those. So this will be decreasing. Okay, and I think that's that's mainly what I wanted to show you here. So um, I will post this in the forum and let you guys um, try it out yourself. And just keep in mind that um, part of this is set up for you, so you get the tables of um, possible outcomes over here for you. Okay. And you know, if you change your name, you know some some things will change here, right? So like like here, I, my dice become four sided, right? So I'm only I'm only getting uh, when I add them up, I get between two and eight, right? So I shouldn't have any of that stuff in there, right? So you know, um, and this possible outcome table will change appropriately. Now it's just a four by four table, right? And it only goes up to eight. So that that stuff does it all for you. This you'd have to redo, right? Again, all by your you know from scratch, okay? Um, so that's what I wanted to show you, and uh, have fun with this.